Hello, my name is Cindy Gomez Shemp, and I am from the People's Press Project. In connection with mexi-can.org, a project of the People's Press Project, and an ongoing campaign on information about immigration policy with local leaders, I want to talk to you about the new president's announcement on immigration. First, the president announced a new program that may help millions of undocumented immigrants. This new program is called Deferred Action for Parental Accountability, or DAPA for short. People who get DAPA will be protected from deportation and will get a work permit for three years. DAPA will not give anyone a green card or United States citizenship. Are you the mother or father of a U.S. citizen or green card holder? And have you been living in the United States since January 1st, 2010? If so, you may qualify for the DAPA program. Second, the president announced changes to the program announced two years ago for some people who came to the United States as children, often called DREAMers. That program is called Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, or DACA for short. People who get DACA will get protection from deportation as well and a work permit for three years. DACA will also not give anyone a green card or U.S. citizenship. Did you come to the United States before you turned 16 years old? And have you also been living here since January 1st of 2010? If so, you may qualify for the newly expanded DACA program. If you got legal advice about DACA before and were told that you did not qualify, you may want to go and get legal advice again. Maybe the changes to the DACA program will help you now. The application process for DACA and DAPA will require a background check. You should get good legal advice about your case. But it's very, very important for you to get legal advice if you've had any contact with police or immigration services, including as a juvenile. Some types of contact with the police or immigration services means you won't qualify for DACA or DAPA, but other problems might be okay. It depends, and that's why it's very important to get good advice. You must avoid immigration scams. Don't pay any money to wait in a line for DAPA or the new expanded DACA programs. There is no line. When can you apply for these programs? At this time, you can't apply for DAPA, the program for parents of U.S. citizens and green card holders. That application period should start around May of 2015. You cannot apply for the new expanded DACA program either. That application period should start around February of 2015. But if you qualify for DACA under the old rules, you can apply at this time. People who need to renew their DACA can also apply at this time. For more information about the old DACA rules, visit weownthedream.org. There are many organizations ready to provide you with information about DAPA and DACA. Visit adminrelief.org for free information and to find legal help near you. There are many organizations ready to provide you with information about DAPA and DACA, but please check the other administrative relief information websites or visit adminrelief.org to find legal help near you. Hello, this is Cindy Gomez Shemp, and I'm with the People's Press Project. We are visiting again today with Anna Stenson, an immigration attorney who is jointly working together with the People's Press Project and other community leaders to bring an information campaign on President Obama's recent annou announcement about immigration. Thank you and welcome. Um, I wanted to jump right in and uh, remind folks that we're doing these weekly podcasts and that we've already had one podcast that came out where we talk about DACA and DAPA, the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals and the Deferred Action for Parental Accountability. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, although we're still a little bit confused on what what we're, what words we're going to associate with DAPA, so that A could change from accountability to something else that begins with A. 
Okay, okay. All right, so we know for a fact that these two programs have been announced, but we know also that no one can apply for them yet. Correct. No filing yet. We know that it's going to happen, not today. Right, right. But there will be possibly opening for um, DACA and DAPA in February and then also possibly in May, correct? Well, the, the expanded DACA, the president said, you know, within 90 days of today, I want this pro program to be available. So that's the expanded DACA is going to be available we believe beginning february 18th immigration has said don't expect you know anything to be announced much ahead of that day that they can start applications now the dapa isn't going to be eligible until that next that later date okay okay and <clears throat> um what about for folks that already tried to apply for daca and they were told you don't qualify Yep, if you had visited with somebody before about if you whether or not you were eligible for the original DACA and you were told no because you were too old or you weren't here at the right time, you might want to go back in and, and check in again to see if the changes for the expanded DACA are going to make you eligible for the expanded DACA where you wouldn't have been eligible before. And we'll talk about some of those key dates, but if you didn't meet the original dates for the original DACA, you might meet the new dates for the expanded DACA. Okay, so that's important for the listeners because there may be a chance for you to qualify for this program even if you did not qualify okay. before. That's correct. That, that's something you have to check out with an attorney. Now. Um, what are some of the other eligibility requirements that we went over? Just briefly, uh, you know, let's talk about the age thing and the date thing. Yep, and again, for the DACA program, it's focused on people who came here when they were little. So um, you have to have been under 16 when you at first entered the U.S. Okay. Um, you've, and we'll talk about the new date, but you have to show that you've been in the U.S. since January 1st, 2010. Okay. Um, and because this is, is for children, they also want, they have an educational element that you have to show that you've either graduated high school, you've gotten your GED, or that you're currently enrolled in an educational program or enrolled in classes to get your GED. Okay, so I, if I am now an adult and I never did get my high school diploma or GED and I want to apply for DACA, I can still do that if I go and enroll in a GED program right now. Yep, it, even if you didn't get your high school diploma or your GED on schedule, even as an adult, you can enroll in, in certain GED classes. Even some online classes may count. Um, there is a, a whole proof of showing what that the program that you're enrolled in is actually a accredited, a, accredited you know, program. But yeah, you, even if you're older and never got your GED, you can go back and enroll in, in a GED program and then qualify for the DACA. Good, good to know. Okay, so now... The old DACA program is one thing, and the new DACA program, the expanded DACA, is different. What Can you point to what those differences are for folks? Yep. Right now, the president said there's he made three basic changes to DACA. One, the original DACA was only going to be good for two years of work authorization and two years of protection. The expanded DACA, you now are going to get three years of work authorization and three years of protection. So that's one big thing. The second one is under the original DACA, you had to have been under 31 to qualify. There is no longer an upper age limit. So if you, if you didn't qualify for the original DACA because you were 32, you could now qualify for the the expanded DACA because there's no maximum age limit. That's really important. Yeah. And, and so that, that's going to cover a group of people who might have been told no the first time with the original DACA, but with the expanded DACA, they're now going to find that they're eligible. The third biggest um, change was before you had to show that you were in the U.S. Um, since 2007. 
Mm-hmm. Now they've moved that date forward in up basically three years that you have to show that you've been in the U.S. since January 1st, 2010. So again, somebody who might not have been here in 2007, but was here in 2010 is now going to be eligible, where they wouldn't have been eligible under the original program. But those are all very important details. So folks really do need to go to a professional to get all of those yeah. different details checked out. Because again, even if they didn't qualify before, things could so, change. Yep, and, and we're still, th- thinking that some of the el- the eligibility and the requirements for the expanded DACA could change because we're not sure because we know the requirements for the original DACA mm-hmm. and we've only ta- the president has only talked about changing those three things those three things we talked about so far so far which means they could also change the date that you have to show that you were here or some other little requirement based on changing the three big things right so again we're trying to get people up to speed even though we don't know a lot of the information but that's important that's why it's important Mm -hmm. to check back in with our future podcasts because we're going to have updated information Mm -hmm. and speaking of future podcasts we are going to be holding a podcast specifically for discussion of the criminal history and documentation issues that people might have But just to give a brief recap of some of the most important points dealing with criminal history, what are some of the things that folks really need to look out for? And and with with DACA, immigration has started to create new words and new terminology that we we didn't have before in, in some parts of immigration. But if you've ever been arrested for a felony, Immigration is also defined um, that you're not going to be eligible for DACA if you've had a significant misdemeanor. So there's a list that immigration has created of what they think are significant misdemeanors. Mm -hmm. And then they've also said if you've had three or more regular misdemeanors that that could make you ineligible. Um, You know, so the key part is if you've ever been arrested or charged and convicted of a crime, you really want to talk with somebody to figure out where in that criminal history requirement that um, your your criminal history falls and so one of the things you can do now is visit with somebody and we can we can take a look at your criminal history to see if it might make you eligible or or might make you ineligible and if there's something we can do to try and fix that criminal history so you can be come eligible the other important thing we talked about last time too is if you have a juvenile record some of that some of your juvenile record could count for your eligibility for DACA too. So that's something that people really need to check with an attorney about because if you've had some kind of criminal history, some kind of police contact, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're not eligible. You could be eligible still. Yeah, you could still be eligible and we talked about before too, Immigration has also created a, pri- a new priority list of who is going to who's the new priority to being deported. So right. you don't want to have committed a crime that's high on their deportation list and then apply for DACA because that's one of the ways where you could find yourself getting into trouble. Deported. Deported. Wow. So yes, definitely yep. call call someone Get an appointment with the lawyer. How can people get a hold of you if they want to get yep. a hold of you? My phone number is 701-298-7720, and you can call me. And if I can't help you, I usually will will try and help put you in the hands of somebody who might be able to help you, too. I know we talked about this briefly last time, too, but I wanted to talk about this again because I think it's really important. Most folks don't think about what would happen if I travel. Can I go visit... Like, let's say it's my and my boyfriend's anniversary and we would like to go to Hawaii. It's still within the United States. Can I travel or am I going to get into problems if I'm applying for DACA or DAPA? Usually what I tell people is if you can stay put, you can you usually get into less problems. If you Problems? What could happen? Well, say you're traveling to Mexico and there's weather problems or you have airplane problems. All of a sudden, you might have to land that someplace that's not in the U.S. Mm. Once you land someplace that's not in the U.S., you're going to have to be subject to U.S. Customs. Oh. Yep. 
And many airports have different screening levels because the airports have customs officers who do go through the airports and ask people to see their paperwork. So even if I'm just going to go from, you know, Minnesota to Iowa, there's a possibility that my plane could be rerouted somewhere and I could end up in an airport where they're going to check my papers? Yep, and you don't even necessarily need to be rerouted. If, you, if you're if you going through the normal security screening mm. and there's a problem with the paperwork you're presenting, they might refer you to the immigration officers to, de- to decide what, what your paperwork is. Or there's been instances of border officials and, and different immigration agents that are randomly stopping people to check for their ID and their paperwork. So... Not, not to scare you too much, but there are instances of people who have ended up being caught because they're even traveling within the U.S. Um, you know, we're here, here in Fargo or in Moorhead, we're close to the border, and there's always, you know, some interior checkpoints where, you know, immigration is randomly stopping people and asking for their paperwork. So you guys heard it here. If you don't have to travel, just yes. stay put. Yeah, and, and that's one of those going, especially if you think that you're going to be eligible, at least stay put until you get that work authorization. Or call Anna or call an attorney and find out if you, if you are going to run into yep. some problems. Yep, and it is one of those, I, I hope that it doesn't happen, but I, I give people the warning because it happens frequently enough that somebody you know, is, is picked up, whether it's you know driving, vis, driving visiting their friend, you know, they're pulled over by the police and the police, you know, find out that, ask them for their papers and they don't have their papers or whether it's, you know, taking the, <clears throat> taking a plane, a train, a bus, you know, any of those interactions, you know, can kind of make it more risky. And if you think you're going to be eligible, sometimes the best thing to do is just to stay put. Um, one important thing is that if you think you're eligible for this, do not leave the U.S. That you want to make sure that you're here and that you're not going to have a problem proving that you that you haven't that you haven't left the U.S. Okay, but what if I've already done that? What if I already screwed that up and I've already left the U.S. at some oh, point? It, Is that going to affect my ability to apply for DACA? It's going to depend. It's going to depend on when you left. How long you were gone and what happened when you came back so that's another one of those instances where you know sit down and think about you know have I always been here in the US or did I make that trip back to Mexico to visit grandma or for an aunt or an uncle's funeral you know and, and try and get paperwork about you know when did you leave when did you come back and check in with somebody to see whether or not that's gonna affect your eligibility so this would be another major issue that you need to check with an attorney or somebody that's been licensed to give immigration advice. Yep, that's exactly it. You know, if if you have had any of these things, you know, criminal history or you've ever left the U.S. since you came in the first time, just to go in and, and check in to make sure that you're still going to be eligible and that you're not going to get into trouble if you apply for this. Because for, because for the application for DACA and DAPA, there are and there have been even before in the DACA program that was original, um, a presence date that you have to prove you yep. were present in the country on that date. Talk about what those requirements are going to yep. be now. Well, with the original DACA program, you had to show that you were physically here in the U.S. on June fifteenth, two 2012. When the president made his announcement, he didn't say, well, now you have to show that you were in the U.S. on the date he made the announcement in November. But that's one of those things that I think immigration is trying to work out. The, is it, are we sticking with the original DACA date of June 15th, 2012? Or for the new expanded program, are you going to have to show that you were here when he made the announcement on November 20th, 2014? Mm. And so, yeah, there's always been that physical presence date that they pick a particular date that you have to show that you've actually were here in the U.S. on that date. Okay, so um, we know some things for sure that folks can get ready for right now. For example, we know what the filing fee costs. 
Yep, we know that the filing fee cost is going to be $465. And again, you can't apply yet because the form that we're, is for the original DACA program is not going to be is not going to work for the expanded DACA program. So completely new registration process, completely new form. Yes. And for each person, it's four hundred sixty-five dollars. Yep, it's going to be four hundred sixty-five dollars. You know, for each person who thinks they're eligible for DACA. And we also know that people are going to need to have certain types of documentation. Yep, and we're going to do another podcast in terms of documentation, but what we know now is you can start gathering documents, you can start checking to see if you meet the requirements that we know of, and, you know, for documents, make sure that you have an ID, you know, something that says who you are. Um, if you're eligible for DACA, we talked about you have to prove that educational requirement. Mm -hmm. So school records, school transcripts, high school diploma. If you never got your GED, go in and talk with a lawyer or a representative to make sure that you get enrolled in a program that will qualify you for DACA. Um, and proof of when you came to the U.S. and that you've been in the U.S. since that time. Yes, okay. So... And again, we will talk more about the details of the documents and some of the issues that might come up with some kinds of documents that people have used in the past, you know, maybe if they were false or whatever. We'll get into all the details in that future podcast, but it's good for folks to know that they can do some things right now to get ready. And one of the things that people should know about the documents is that the consulates are allowing people now to get their documentation here in the United States rather than going back to the origin country. Yep, and that's working for Mexico. Mexico has announced that if you need to get a Mexican birth certificate or a Mexican ID, that the Mexican consulate consulates here in the U.S. are going to help Mexican citizens get some of those documents without having to go back to Mexico or have somebody in Mexico get those documents. Okay, one last thing. Uh, I wanted to talk about because this is something people need to concern themselves. Don't get scammed. There's some scams going on yep, out there. There's a lot of scams going out there. People are saying, you know, oh, I can guarantee that you're going to qualify for this. Right now, we, you can't even apply, so we can't guarantee anything. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that's going on now is when President Obama talked about immigration reform, he talked about making sure people went back and paid their taxes. Mm -hmm. And so now, since it's tax season, there's scammers out there who are encouraging the undocumented people and saying, well, you need to go back and file your old taxes in order to be eligible for DACA. Well, that's not one of the things immigration has talked about as a DACA requirement. So you shouldn't be paying somebody to go back and file, file your taxes if you didn't file them before. That that's currently not a requirement. So and if somebody tries to put you on a list, on a waiting list that you have to pay for, that's also not true. Yeah, nope. And what I've been telling Mike, if somebody calls in and I think that they're going to be eligible for the expanded DACA, I take their name and I take their information and I say, you know what, I'll give you a call as soon as we know more and then we, we can go from there. Now, if somebody has a criminal issue or they've been gone from the U.S., you know, I have them... I, I can meet with them now so we can try and figure out whether or not they're going to qualify and if they need to get documents or if there's something we can do to fix it. But yep, if somebody is saying, you know, give me money right now, you know, that, you know, that, that, that might be a scam. Right. So if people are asking you for money up front right now for things that you can't even apply for, that might be a scam. Yeah. But what is really important for folks to remember is that there's a number of things they're going to need in preparation for the application process like having their criminal background checked and all of this stuff that lawyers can help them resolve now. Yes. Um, so if you have any questions about your travel in and out of the country, your, your criminal background history, documents that you don't have or documents that you've used in the past, those kinds of things people should make an appointment with somebody that's qualified like yourself and get all those things sorted out now. Yes. Because it could take some time to do. It can take some time to do, and then there's going to be, we're thinking there's going to be a rush. As soon as people are going to be able to apply, we're going to be helping people apply, not necessarily be working on the difficult issues. Right, and so if somebody waits 
until the application process is already open and there's something wrong or missing that could cause a problem in their application process. Yep, and it, it could delay the process or if if we don't if you don't learn up front that you might not qualify, you might have problems after you apply. And better to try and get those things figured out now because otherwise it's just going to make it longer before you can even apply. Okay, all very very good information. Thank you once again for going over this very complicated issue, but very important for millions of uh, potentially qualified people for DACA and DAPA. And we will bring you more information in upcoming podcasts. Thanks okay. again. Yep, thank you. This is Cindy Gomez Shemp, and you've just listened to a podcast of the People's Press Project. We will be hosting a series of podcasts discussing topics related to the President's announcement on immigration, which will be broadcast in English and Spanish. Please share them and help us spread the word. To find out more information about this or other podcasts and online media, visit our websites at fmppp.org, mexi-can.org, or like and follow us on Facebook at The People's Press Project, mexi-can, and find us on Twitter at at media underscore ppp.